Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today I have another 10 different zero waste swaps that will make blank more sustainable. Today we are talking about holiday feasts, dinner parties, generally serving food for more people. That's today's topic. I spent the last year writing a sustainable and plant-based gourmet cookbook that hopefully will be out in Danish. In October. I'll also be looking to getting it published in English, obviously. As a result, I've hosted a lot of three to six course menus for both friends and family. And overall, I just really love having people over for food, talking, having a great time, having some wine. It's amazing. When we do these things, when we invite more people over, when we decide that we want to make more fancy food, a several course menu, when we're having holiday feasts, when we're having dinner, celebrating things. And it's often during these times, during holiday dinners, more like festive feasts. It's during fancy dinners and many people getting together that we often forget how to be sustainable or at least maybe we don't forget but we sometimes ignore it and sometimes it's more convenient to just do these more sustainable actions when we're by ourselves. It's more difficult to incorporate these sustainable actions and the sustainable mindset into a context where we are trying to do something extra, where we're celebrating some things. It's not always a priority. However, it can be. So today I have gathered 10 different things that will make your dinner party, your holiday feast, etc more sustainable. You catch my drift. Let's get started. First of all is thrifted tableware. Everything from glasses, plates, cutlery, table covers, everything, trays, everything. Everything you put on the table can usually be found in a thrift store. And the reason why I mention it specifically in terms of more festive context, fine dining experiences, is that often we associate luxury with things being super sleek, and alike, and it's sort of a sign of wealth to have loads of the same thing. However, I really want to challenge that. I have created the most beautiful, in my own opinion, holiday tables and generally festive tables with things I have exclusively found in thrift shops. I think bringing thrifted things into the more luxurious space is really, really important because to a lot of people there is still this notion that thrifted things, secondhand things, is gross or poor. Low-key, I was recently at an event where one of the main speakers were promoting using secondhand dresses for weddings and parties, which I thought was amazing. And then she said, and I went into a thrift shop to find this secondhand dress. It didn't even smell bad in there. You yeah, know, duh. Do you think they just pull things out of people's laundry bins and put it on a hanger? They obviously wash your clothes. So I think there's still a lot of work to be done in order to thoroughly incorporate these pre-loved, second-hand, thrifted things into a space of luxury, into a space of enjoying life, fine dining. So it, this is why I wanted to talk about it. Anyway, one of the things I've talked about on this channel before is versatility. So having one thing that can function as many different things rather than having many different things only doing one thing is typically more sustainable. Having that versatility in your products that you use is amazing. And you can actually apply that mindset in the food that you're making. So if I'm serving more dishes, I don't want to stand there making three different white sauces or three different purees. I will make a base puree and then then I can use it in different ways. I can divide it into smaller containers and add lemon, more salt, more sugar, whatever I want to. But having a good set of base recipes will make your life in the kitchen so much easier because you won't have to spend hours and hours doing basically the same thing. That also saves a bunch of ingredients and potentially a lot of food waste. That goes for stuff like puree, for sauces and garnish. If you're buying things specifically to use it as decoration on your plate or garnish, use those things throughout your dishes. That also creates sort of a red thread throughout that is incredibly fun for the guests to experience because they can see a theme through your menu. So it's not only more sustainable, it also makes the experience more cohesive. I use a standard cake batter to make these crispy twill and I use them in different shapes, the same batter, different shapes, dust them with different dusts on all of my dishes. Next up is reusable containers, both for pre-serving your food. So if you're prepping things in advance, I usually like to prep a lot of things the day before, the evening before. I will use 
reusable containers to store all my food in. And if I have leftovers, which I usually do, I will also use those same reusable containers to store the leftovers in. So when we're making food for loads of people, we often end up gravitating towards plastic bags, cling film, aluminium foil, all that type of stuff. But good solid containers, there's just no way of beating them. It's also way easier to stack things like that. So I don't really care if your solid containers are in stainless stainless steel, in glass or in plastic. If it's reusable, it's a good product. And the best thing is you don't even have to go out and buy these expensively. You can usually just use grocery store packaging over and over again. This is a slightly smaller thing, but reusable napkins. So that's usually what you get at nicer restaurants. And as such, there's no need to use disposable single-use napkins at home. I have a couple of different ones. I have two green ones and two white ones and I'll just use them. I'll mix and match throughout my table. Aha, many places where the visual aesthetic is also heightened by sustainability. Bam. Now, when we're setting a table, we have to think of ambiance. And a great way to do that, especially if it's a little darker out, is by using candles. But many candles are made with paraffin wax, which is derived from oil. And it's not good. It's not good for the environment to create those products. And it's not good at all to light them inside and breathe in that air. It's incredibly toxic, actually. So there are a few alternatives that's both healthier for you, but also definitely better for the planet. One thing you can do is use a natural wax like soy, which is the candles that I have. You can also use beeswax if that's your jam. In terms of sustainability, it's still way better than paraffin wax. Or you can use LED electric lights, which have a very low carbon footprint, can be used many, many, many times. And uh, yeah, definitely a great alternative, which also makes the toxins in your home zero from candles. So both those options are actually pretty good. Now you're serving food, but you're probably also serving drinks. And one thing I like to do is that I like to start my guests out with sparkling wine, usually champagne. Then I'll go into serving a white wine, then a red, and then I'll usually end on a dessert wine and then a cocktail. Ideally, that's what I do. Sometimes if I'm having guests over that don't like wine in particular, I'll either make a juice pairing or I'll make cocktails. So when it comes to cocktails, you can get tons of syrups. You can buy a million different types of them in stores, which is also fine. Loads of them come in glass bottles that are easily recyclable. If you want to take things a little further, make your own syrups. You can use so many different types of berries and fruits and actually also vegetables and turn them into these amazing, very low waste, sustainable syrups using sustainably sourced and fair trade sugar. And often it takes extremely little work. I recently made a rhubarb syrup for my drinks and it was amazing. Served it with gin and tonic with a rhubarb twist. Now this one obviously applies to all meals that we make, but it's something that still needs a lot of work in its association with luxury, fine dining, etc. And it's plant-based foods. Plant-based foods, it's not only for vegans or vegetarians, it's for everybody. I don't think that everybody can or should go vegan, but I think that everybody needs to work on their consumption of animal products. According to the prognosis, we need to reduce our consumption of animal products so we're 75% before 2030 in order to reach our climate goals. So anywhere in that area is really amazing. Even though you're not a vegan or vegetarian, you can still use oat milk in your cooking. Same, absolute, same result. You can use plant-based butter. Absolute, same result. You can look into recipes that doesn't require meat and actually work with the vegetables in a more proactive way because there's a lot of flavor, a lot of amazing delicacies to be found in vegetables and using them not only as a side to meat, which over and in and of itself is pretty lazy, but actually learning how to use vegetables in your kitchen is a really amazing thing for everybody to learn. So incorporate more plant-based dishes no matter what your usual diet looks like. Overall, we need a bigger cultural change in terms of our mindset regarding what is good food what is luxury, what is fine dining, because plant-based recipes can absolutely 100% be a part of that. And when it comes to recipes and putting together what type of foods that we are serving, 
the, the fact that it's plant-based is obviously one thing, but looking into seasonal produce and locally produced produce as well is so incredibly important. So we have a plethora of options if we go into a supermarket. Loads of them are not seasonal, are produced halfway around the world. And those foods, those produce are fine to buy once in a while, obviously, but and this is something I've struggled with in Denmark a lot. A lot of people have no idea here how to use the vegetables that are actually in season in Denmark, especially during the winter time. And there are so many versatile uses for these foods. We just haven't used them in a while, or it's considered really old school or boring or bland to use them. But that's so far from the truth. There's so many amazing ways to use these vegetables. I think we should be more mindful of choosing things that are produced more locally, more close by. Also gives you more appreciation for the seasons and also makes you appreciate what we have in a whole other way. There's just so many benefits to it. It's also more sustainable, more low impact. Yeah. Now going into zero waste realness, using every part of your ingredients is also something that can both elevate your dishes as well as make your dinner party or your menu more sustainable. Things like drying your herb stems and making them into a powder that you can drizzle on top of your dishes, that's something you would otherwise just thrown away, that you are now using. Using onion peels and veggie scraps to make broth for your sauces to give them a much deeper, more umami flavor, also more sustainable, also makes your food taste better. Making crisps from potato peels, making juice from leftover produce, I can literally keep going. One specific thing that I found to be really helpful here is using my dehydrator, which is what I use to make powders. And I am a witch at this point. I have made rose powder, stinging nettle powder. I've made mint powder. And these are so incredibly flavorful. I foraged a lot of these things myself or I buy them at my local farmer's market when they're in season. So every time you have a larger quantity of leftover produce, herbs, whatever, think about ways of using them. Can you infuse them into a liquid or can you make them into a powder? Because those things can be incredible in your food and will really take your food to the next level as well. And lastly, when it comes to special occasions, festive dinners, we really like to do something extra for our table and decorate it in a nice way. And here I think it's incredibly important to stay away from single-use products, from single-use decorations, from plastic glitter, all that kind of stuff and use natural reusable decorations instead. I have a couple of roads that I usually take. Either I have the same type of decor every single year again and again, or I use things like leaf confetti and branches and things that can be found on the ground in nature. And you can also reuse that over and over again, by the way. But I also have some more generic decor that I can shush up and down depending on what kind of season we are in right now. But thinking about reusability and thinking about ways of using this many times rather than just going to a store and buying tons of single-use decor, I know which one I would choose for sure. It also elevates your table. I cannot really think of anything that cheapens the look of a table more so than glitter. I don't think it looks nice or elegant. I think it makes it look cheaper, but that's my opinion. And that has nothing to do with sustainability. That's just me being a snob anyway. That's 10 things you can do to make festive dinners and special locations and your dinner parties more sustainable. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, you can leave me a thumbs up. That would make my day. And if you want more zero waste, sustainable and low impact tips, subscribe to my channel. That would also indeed make my day. If you have any additional tips for this video, leave them down below, share with the group and we can help each other out. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.